Hi friends, welcome to PlantScienceForYou.com. In this presentation, we are going to discuss about the difference between homosporous and heterosporous life cycle. First of all, the homosporous condition in plants. In homosporous condition, as a term indicates, that particular plant produces a single type of spore, and that spore gives rise to a gametophyte that contains a male reproductive structure called as antheridium, and also the female reproductive structure called as the archegonium in the same gametophyte. So homosporous plants produce a single type of spore and gametophyte contain both the male and female parts. Examples include lycopodium, equisetum, etc. The second condition is a heterosporous condition. Hetero means two. In this condition there are two types of spores. One is a megaspore or the female spore and the second one is a microspore or the male spore. The female spore gives rise to a gametophyte that bears the archegonium, the female reproductive structure. Whereas a male spore produces the microspore or which produces a male gametophyte with the antheridium. Here there are two different types of spores that are that can be considered as a male spore and a female spore, giving rise to gametophyte which are having male reproductive organ and female reproductive organ separately. Examples include Selagina lama, Arcelia and all higher plants. Now what are the things we need to know in order to draw the life cycle of a plant? First of all, we should know whether the plant is gametophytic or sporophytic. Secondly, whether the plant is homosporous or heterosporous. Third thing, the spore bearing structure in the case of ferns especially. Then there are certain key facts to help to draw the life cycle is all lower plants up to pteridophytes are gametophytic and homosporous. Pteridophytes include both homosporous and heterosporous plants in the given example, Lycopodium and Equisetum are homosporous, whereas Selaginella and Marsilia are heterosporous. Then all higher plants including pteridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms are sporophytic and heterosporous. So these are the key facts that helps to draw the life cycle of any plant. Now let us see the life cycle of a homosporous plant. First thing we should know is the spore bearing structure. In the case of Lycopodium, the spore bearing structure is the stopilus. The stobilus is a spore bearing structure. Inside the stobilus, there are, there are spore mother cells that undergo meiosis to form haploid spores, which are homosporous, therefore, which give rise to a gametophyte that contain both antheridium and archegonium, and sperms and egg fertilize under, in the presence of water and forms the zygote, and zygote further divides to form the sporophyte and later forms the mature sporophyte. So, in a homosporous life cycle, the things to know is the spore bearing structure, then there is a single type of spore that gives rise to a gametophyte having both antheridium and archegonium. Now moving to the heterosporous life cycle of Selaginella, here the spore bearing structure is same as Lycopodium, it is a stobilus, and stobilus contains both type of spores. You can see right here, there is a megaspore or the female spore and microspore. So there is a diversion right here. There are two kinds of spores, a megaspore and a microspore. And megaspore give rise to a female gametophyte that is bearing the archegonium or the female reproductive structure, whereas a microspore germinate to form the male gametophyte that bears the antheridium or the male reproductive structure. And sperm and egg fuse to form the zygote. Zygote later divides to form the mature sporophyte and this is the sporophyte. So in this life cycle the only difference is that there is a division right here. There are two types of spores and the spores give rise to a male gametophyte and a female gametophyte separately and that is a major difference. Hope things are clear. You are with PlantScienceForYou.com. Thank you so much for watching.